Here in this next video lesson we shall look at post windows. These are tasks that should be concluded after a fresh installation of windows that has been activated. These include installing an antivirus program, updating windows, choosing a browser. We shall be using the VirtualBox application during this video. So the first thing you should do is install the NAT interface. Remember this is the network address translation. This would not be necessary if we were updating a standalone operating system. This is done only using VirtualBox so it is able to access the internet through the host. We select the guest that we wish to update then click on settings. Select network then change the selector to the right of attach to. Change to nap then OK. When Windows restarts, you should first check for an internet connection. The first item on our list is used to protect the software, files and folders on the computer. This will be in the form of an antivirus program. There are many types available such as Norton, AGV, McAfee to name a few. Some of these are trial free, in other words you can use them for a certain period then after this time you will need to pay for their use. In some instances, while surfing the internet you may be prompted to install a free antivirus program that will also enhance the performance of the computer. Most, but not all, will cause a message to appear that is found a phantom virus, and for a fee this can be removed. In some extreme cases this message will return after a period of time, once again prompting for payment. To avoid these types of so-called free antivirus and enhanced programs, use Google or similar search engine for details on the products before they are installed. In our example we shall be using the Microsoft Security Essentials. There have been many different reports on the reliability of this software, some of these being reported by other companies that produce a similar product. Which of these you use is down to experience or recommendation. Here we shall search for the Microsoft Security Essentials. Notice here that the top search is from pcfile.com. It is recommended that if you are searching for a particular product then you should visit the manufacturer's website. Since some third party ones will install other so called internet help toolbars or additional software. In some cases these additions can be a potential threat or cause the slowing down of the computer. If in doubt do not install. The second website down is the Microsoft.com. If we click on this it will take us directly to the website and the download section. By clicking on download we'll start the process. We will then be prompted to run or save. In our example we have chosen run. The first part is the installation program. Once complete it will run and we will be prompted with do you want the program to make changes to this computer. Always recheck that the software that you are installing is from the original source and a trusted website. Since we do, we shall click on yes. Once again, if you are in doubt, click on no. We can now close the browser and the installation wizard will begin. After clicking on next, you will be prompted with a license agreement. Always have a read of these if you are in doubt, since uninstalling certain software can cause a problem and once again some will demand payment before they can be uninstalled. In this first part you will be prompted to join the customer's experience program. You should remember that for the manufacturers to improve on their services they must have some sort of feedback so this would be useful to take part. In our example we have chosen not to. Then we clicked on next. Here we have prompted to activate a firewall. A firewall as the name implies protects the computer from possible threats and should be active at all times as this can block viruses and malicious software. The Microsoft Firewall also includes an automatic sample submission. This means if the firewall is greeted with a new threat, 
it is automatically sent to Microsoft to be analysed. Once again, this is useful for the manufacturer to keep their software up to date. In our example, we have agreed to this. After clicking on Next, the Security Essential installation will begin. Once the installation has been completed, a new restart will be required. If we click on the icon selector on the taskbar, we can see a red cross over the Security Essentials, indicating a problem. If we open this, a message appears that the PC is at risk and the software requires an update. Click on Update will start the process. This completes the installation and the scan of the computer. Notice here the message, PC status protected. Of course, installing an antivirus program is one thing, but it needs to scan at regular times. By clicking on Settings tab, we can see the following. The scan type is set as a quick scan that normally looks at areas that may be infected. And in most cases, this will be the most up-to-date files and folders. However, this can be changed to a full scan that will check each and every file within the computer. This can take many hours to complete and normally will only run on a newly installed operating system or if the user suspects that the system has been infected. We can choose a day when this should occur, along with the time. Before it is run, we can even set the PC to download the most up-to-date definitions. Start the scan only when it is on but not in use. We have to bear in mind that scanning the computer will use a set amount of resources, so it will affect the performance of the computer. And here we can limit the CPU usage during the scan. Now are the settings you may wish to set or reset, but the default settings here is adequate for most systems. Another setting we should look at is the Windows Defender, and this can be accessed through the Control Panel, System and Security, Action Center, then we click on the selector to the right of Security, then on View Installed Antiware, then on View Installed Antispyware Program. Here you can see that the Microsoft Security Essential is running, but the Windows Defender is not. The idea of Windows Defender is prevention. Most viruses, when they become active, will attempt to change some setting within the operating system. If this happens, then Windows Defender will prompt the user. It could be that the user has visited a website and agreed to download a file and unknowingly a virus. Of course, there are some instances that we need certain files to change. For instance, we may want to update the video drivers or install some new printer software and both of these will cause Windows Defender to issue a warning. It is down to the user to agree and the program will continue or disagree and the program will be blocked. Here we shall enable it. Another setting is the user account settings. We may wish to alter certain settings that will affect the way Windows behaves. Here we can set the sensitivity to this. Once again, this will be left as the default settings. The next part is the Windows Update. We can check on this through Start, Control Panel, System and Security, then Windows Update. Here we can see a red cross and we have the option to check for updates. Notice the time here, 12.27. Here you can see there are 102 input updates, just over 200 megabytes. After clicking on updates, we are once again presented with an agreement, and to continue, we must agree and click on finish. Notice the end time 15:55. It has taken over three hours to complete. The final part is choosing the browser you will be using for accessing the internet. The choice once again can be recommendation or experience.
you may find that some will only be installed with certain Windows service packs. If this is the case as shown here, then search for the respective service pack and install it.